Malcolm Ellison attacked Alan Mullery on television during the World Cup. Alan Mullery, in the last few days, has called it a stab in the back. Today, they come face to face on the big match. Welcome to you. And as well as the big confrontation, Malcolm Allison in one of the corners and Alan Mullery in the other one, we've also got plenty of action for you as well on a program that also includes some wizardry and a goal by Georgie Best and the sending off of the Hull City forward Chris Chilton. Our main match, though, is Spurs against Manchester City. But now Martin Peters. That's for Chivers to go for. Chivers going in. My goodness, just wide. Also, Norwich against Hull. Stringer. And Manchester United against Blackpool. Nice double change of direction, and what a shot! And, of course, Jimmy Hill is here to bring you analysis of some of the moments that matter, and we shall also be reflecting, naturally, some of the letters that we've had from you. But now let's go and join the 42,000 lucky fans in the sunshine at White Hart Lane. Spurs against Manchester City, lying fifth and second in the first division, respectively. Both pledged to attacking and entertaining football. A match brimming with stars and some as bright, but none brighter, I think, than Colin Bell of Manchester City. And this Spurs team surely know all about Bell. Jennings back in goal, by the way, and Morgan at number 11 after injury. As for Manchester City, they're without young Booth at number five and his look plays. And good news for them is that Francis Lee passed a late fitness test and wears the number nine shirt. The referee is Danny Lydon of Birmingham, here having a word with Alan Mullery, and now we're just about ready for the start. So Manchester City kick off in red and black stripes, defending the goal to our right, with a very good record indeed in recent years against the Spurs. Spurs have not beaten City since Manchester City came back to the First Division in 1966. That's eight league games and one in the Cup as well, and Spurs haven't won one of them. Well, their form at Crystal Palace last week was promising enough to uh, make them a little more encouraged this week. But there's Heslop in for Booth. And now Oakes, some of it. And a throw to Tottenham and Joe Kinnear with it. Gilzean to Perryman. And that's going to fall for Kinnear. Chivers waiting in the middle, and Peters too! Fractionally too high for Martin Peters. Although it just skimmed the top of his head from Kinnear. Back to Joe Corrigan. Six foot four and a half inches of him. Some of it with Knowles having slipped, but Knowles recovering. Bell to Lee. And now Philip Beal for Tottenham. In fact, Spurs' good form goes uh, a little way further back than that 3-0 uh, victory at uh, Crystal Palace last week. And here's Chivers, who's done an awful lot for them in the last month. Five goals in the last two games. Peters now to Morgan, to Peters! And he tried to guide that one wide of Corrigan which would have been so reminiscent of a goal that Peter scored against Scotland at Wembley a couple of years ago. But why do the post and the goal kick? Spurs, who in fact have scored 13 goals in the last four games without reply. Here's Peters. and uh, Lee having a little tussle there the free kick given to uh, Spurs Lee backing into England Knowles oh nicely turned inside by Perriman to Peters and now to Mullery Chivers that's looking for Chivers and he almost played that off for Mullery to come storming in on it England 
Kinnear turning it in again. Chivers once more. And now Mallory! Can he do it? No! That's passed! Well, that was bad luck for Mallory. He was following the trace. And just outside that post. And that was a goal Mallory would love to have got. And it would have been one in the eye, I must say, for Malcolm Allison. Oaks. Well, Muller has scored three goals this season. That would have been the softest of the lot. Pardo to Bell. And now Lee versus England again. Lee, oh, beautiful control. And Beal coming in and losing it. Lee, can he still get it? Well, he's found Oaks. That was total perseverance on the part of Francis Lee. Some beautiful skills to start it off, and then determination that almost finished it off with that pass to Oaks. So a quarter of an hour gone, no score. And a free kick now to uh, Manchester City. Chivers already looking in very good form indeed for Spurs this afternoon. He really does seem to be coming on for them. Doyle. Perriman going in as though his life depended on it. Book. Summerby slipping the Knowles very easily. Or rather Peters. And here's Knowles now. Oh, he could have put Jennings into trouble, but it's a goal kick. Leiden making uh, quite sure, Leiden who in fact is on the FIFA list for the first time this season and Francis Lee and a kick to Spurs which Pat Jennings is going to take for them There's not this time getting above Chivers but obviously levering himself, out, himself up on Chivers to get that extra bit of height Perriman, and Heslop away. Perriman again, this time to his skipper, Mullery. Aim towards Chivers and flicking on him. Morgan going in behind Book, but Book taking no chances whatsoever to give away that corner. Morgan was steaming in fast behind Tony Book. Well, Martin Peters there waiting, and Mike England is also there. Gilzean, a good header of the ball at the near post, Chivers. It could be trouble for Manchester City. Chivers there trying to flick it on, but Bell. Oh, straight to Mullery. Mullery being forced out towards that touchline, but now Knowles planting it in again. Peters going in, and down goes Corrigan. From Martin Peters. Tottenham's ball. Knowles. Morgan. A little too tight there for Peters and Book finding Oaks. Bell, good ball by Oaks. Summerby. Doyle. And finally back to Jennings. And now Gilzean to take it up for Tottenham. Again, Kinnear faithfully going outside him. Perriman going through the middle. And now Mullery. That's aim for Knowles. Chivers going up for this one, Heslop this time in again, Gilzean trying to get under it, Mallory storming in again, and a goal kick. Mallory moving in so quickly on these balls, he's really determined to get amongst the scorers this afternoon. Heslop to Oaks. Finding Lee. Bell right up with him and Summerby outside him. 
Lee going on and down he goes for a free kick right on the edge of that penalty area. A yard further in and that would have been without question a penalty. As it is, it could be troublesome enough for Spurs. Heslov, I notice, it's gone up on this, this side of the penalty area. And now from behind that uh, Manchester City goal, looking at the far end, this is how it looks. Young and Bell and Lee, all in there, Heslop also. Bell to Lee. And within a whisper, in fact, of being turned on by George Heslop. But it really wouldn't have given Jennings too much uh, time to think and to see. Although his reactions are probably as fast as any goalkeeper in the league. Here's Pat Jennings. Heslop. And England away. Heslop going in. Bell. And now Samaby against Beal. And the throw is given. No, in fact, it looks as though he's given another free kick, another whistle. No, it's not. In fact, it's a throw for Manchester City with Mike Doyle. Good long one, that is, too. England getting under it again. Bell to head it back in again. Neil Young up. Bell once more, letting it go through to Doyle. First time in, and Pat Jennings beautifully above his head. Mallory. Chivers. And Kinnear to Gilzean. Past Oaks. But straight to Bell. Lee. Turning it inside for Young. And Gilzean again. Oaks. Oaks once more. Knowles to pick it up. Chivers trying to get away from Heslop. And Mallory going hard in on Alan Oakes. There certainly seems to be a bit of feeling between Oakes and Mallory, and here's Perryman. Chivers! Chivers! Oh, there it is! Martin Chivers! Well, it was started by a dogged uh, piece of work by Mallory, and beautifully finished off by Martin Chivers. And that's his sixth goal in his last three games. So Spurs a goal up. Heslop to Bell. City will be looking for the likes of Francis Lee now to put that right. They've got themselves a corner. But not a very good corner. Straight to Gilzean. And now back to Jennings. Francis Lee not happy, I think, with the corner. I think it might have been played a little wider towards him. And now Mallory. Perriman making a dash down the right. Here's Perriman. Chivers again in the middle and towards the near post. And that could have been a devastating ball there by Perriman if Chivers had been just a shade further on. Oaks. Some have been taken from the back by England. Mallory. Dilsey. And Kinnear making another run down that right. Peters going hard into the middle. Still Gilzean, will he get one in with his left shot? Oh, just passed! And by the way, not only Gilzean, but Mallory threw his arms in the air. That could only have been a fraction wide.
England. Peters. Back for Knowles. Gilsey. And now Kinnear. Can't praise Kinnear too much for the runs he's made down the right there in this very hot weather. And it's not very often the ball comes to him, but he acts as a decoy all the time. Up there again. Perriman, Gilsey. Turning it in again towards Shivers. And now Morgan going in and Corrigan out in the nick of time. He's having a lively time of it too, is Roger Morgan. And certainly Spurs have got Manchester City at full stretch so far. Heslop. Oaks in a position to blast one. Oh, and Lee losing his balance from that deflection by Mike England. Chivers again, what a match he's having. Kilsin with Mallory now outside, and there's Kilsin. Oh, and Mallory absolutely furious that Kilsin passed it that way. And Peters didn't look very pleased with it either. Mallory was completely free outside Kilsin. Inside the penalty area too. Morgan. As we go into injury time at the end of this first half, Perriman straight into the body of Bell. Oaks. The Bell. <laughs> Bell to Doyle. And Bell. A little floater there, and England again there with his head, but straight back to Colin Bell. Young. And Summerby trying to go in, and again it's England there with his head, and this time with his feet. Chivers chasing, but outnumbered. Tony Towers. And there goes the whistle for half-time. Malcolm Allison off to the dressing room with Joe Mercer with a job or two to do down there during the half-time interval, because Manchester City are behind and it was the goal by Martin Chivers after 32 minutes that puts them behind. A very encouraging first half then for Tottenham and still so much to come on the big match. Remember, Alan Mullery versus Malcolm Allison still to come and Manchester United against Blackpool as well. The half-time score at White Hart Lane, Spurs 1, Manchester City 0, more soccer for you in just a couple of minutes. So Spurs get it away at the start of the second half then, a goal up. Spurs, in fact, who came into this match fifth in the first division to Manchester City's second, and Spurs reserves at top of their league as well. So although there's been a lot of criticism of Spurs in recent years, certainly this season, they are silencing most of it. And now well deserving to be this one goal up. Here's Chivers with that long throw of his again and Corrigan catching it. A lot of it, of course, down to Alan Mullery, the way he's inspired men on the field. And needing to win and wanting to win this match so very badly. England again. I think a little harshly penalised there. Referee claiming that he was pushing uh, Summerby, but it certainly didn't look it. Doyle. And Beale to head it away for Tottenham to Martin Peters. Shivers, and now Towers to Pardo.
England again. Gilsey. Guinea. Perryman. Taking on Oaks and feeding Oaks. Now Gilzine. Knowles playing it first time wide to Roger Morgan. Faced by Tony Book. Did well there, Morgan, and going on again to try and take that one from Chivers. Forcing Book to give away the corner. Morgan with the corner. Morgan again getting another chance. Perriman on the volley! Well, if you catch them properly, they go and they're unstoppable. And that one was just fractionally not caught properly. England versus Summerby. And the winner, Mike England. Mullery now to Kinnear. Heslop. And England again. He really has let nothing pass Mike England. Knowles. Chivers again getting there first. Peters. Kills in. Peters. Really looked as though something was opening up there for Tottenham, and what a goal that would have been. Summerby. Bell outside him. And Knowles there first, so it's hit his ball. Summerby. Watched by Beal. Bell, first time in. And Gilzine right back to get it away. But Bell again. Beating one, beating another, and finding it there. Beautiful little dribble there by Colin Bell. And City's hopes more and more resting on his ability, I suppose, and Francis Lees to pull something out of nothing. But now Martin Peters. That's for Chivers to go for. Chivers getting it! My goodness, just wide! What a beautiful break by Tottenham. An inch perfect pass by Peters. And a superb looking header by Chivers. And now it's Oaks to bring it away from Manchester City. Young. Some of you well up. Bell making a break on the far side. Still young. Lee. Driving one hard and low, hoping for a lucky deflection. Tony Book to Mike Summerby. That's a long one, looking for Bell. Mallory. He'll see. Chivers, good looking header there, and Kinnear right up, still Kinnear, and a corner, that really was a beautiful break there by Joe Kinnear, shaking off Heslop for all he was worth, forcing Heslop in the end to give away the corner, but what a fine header again by Chivers that set him on his way, and Mullery it is now to take the corner on the far side. Yes, he's up there again, Mike England, and that's what he wants, a high one. And that's what he's got. Doyle there first. Oaks. And some will be offside. And that really was a marginal decision, because when that ball was played, some will be very sportingly now taking the ball back and getting a round of applause for it. Some of it couldn't have been more than a foot offside. Boya there, who scored in this corresponding match last season. The Manchester City substitute warming up to come on. 
Chivers, a nice dainty little flick there to find Morgan. And then Chivers again making the burst. He's got Heslop to beat though. Pulling it back, and Perman going in! And book it back to Walsh, who got ahead there first to turn it back. But a good run by Perriman. And I notice that Jimmy Pierce is also warming up the Spurs substitute. Kinnear. Mallory. Mallory now to Peters. Knowles. No, that won't get through to Chivers. Young to Oaks. And now to Lee. Summerby. England coming across to cover. Now Bell. With a shot. And they had a fair bit of power behind it as well. There's Jimmy Pierce, the Spurs substitute. Chivers. Towers with him. Peters with support and Towers kicking away at Chivers. The free kick given to Tottenham. We know to curl it in. Gilzean alone going in there to challenge Corrigan, and he was offside. <laughs> Referee going across to sort out, I think, the substitute situation. Bowyer coming on, and Francis Lee going off. Ian Bowyer, there he is. And Lee going off. Probably not the time for autographs. And Roger Morgan going off. For Tottenham, towards the tunnel, there he goes, and Pierce on in his place. Doyle. Some of it flicking it on. Nine minutes left. Gilzean, looking for Mallory, but embarrassing Mallory with a pass that was too short. And a throw to Manchester City. Glenn Pardo with it. Towers. Summerby. And now Bell. Doyle. That falls obligingly to the feet of Mallory. Back to Jennings. Some of he took quite a knock on his shoulder in a charge against uh, Mike England. Knowles. A little too high for Martin Chivers. Bell to Boya. Bell. And now Perryman. Kinnear. Steve Perryman. To Joe Kinnear. Peters. Gilsey. And now Knowles. Played for nobody, nobody but Tony Towers for Manchester City. Colin Bell. Towers. Oh, and now Gilzean in a bit of space and Chivers. Also Gilzean. There it is, number two by Gilzean. And that should make it safe for Spurs. Mallory delighted.
Richard. And Gilzine jinking past a couple of City defenders to put that ball wide of Corrigan. So Mullery now delighted, wanting even more effort from his team. And Spurs on the way to inflicting Manchester City with their first league defeat, their first league defeat of the season. They've been beaten in the League Cup, but they're unbeaten so far in the Football League. Jennings to punch it away to Pierce. Gilzine's first goal, remember, since the first day of the season. So no wonder he looked well pleased as well. Chivers. Now Pardo to Heslop. And an awkward tackle there by Gilzean on Heslop. I don't think Heslop was too happy about it. Free kick very quickly taken, and it's Oaks to bring it up now for Manchester City. To Tony Book. Young waiting patiently on the touchline. Book planting it there towards Doyle, who was well up, and Somerby, who was in there as well. Two gentlemen who won't be very happy in the front there, Malcolm Allison and Joe Mercer. Pierce now for Tottenham. Perryman begging for the ball, and Pierce not releasing it. Chivers instead. Finding Mallory, Spurs storming forward again. But now it's Neil Young. Bell's made the break, and Beale has spotted him for the umpteenth time this afternoon. Beale stepping in at precisely the right moment. Had a good game, Philip Beale. Oaks finding Bell. Bell going past England for the first time, and a good shot! Good work, too, by Jennings. From Colin Bell, limping a bit. And there goes the final whistle, and another victory for Tottenham. And one that I'm sure you'd agree that they well deserve. With goals in the first place by Martin Chivers, his ninth of the season, and Alan Gilzean, who'd vanished down the uh, tunnel, having scored the second one with just five minutes to go. So Spurs very well pleased with their form and with the result, and the final score then here at White Hart Lane, Spurs 2, Manchester City 0. So a victory then by Spurs that puts them third in the first division table, just one point behind Manchester City and three points behind the leaders, Leeds United. Now to look at the two Spurs goals in a little more detail, Jimmy Hill. Well, I warned you last week that the Spurs were on the up and up, and I think they proved it with that fine win yesterday. All the re recent features of improvement were there, and none more than in Martin Chivers, who, if he plays like that, will be probably the most costly and expensive player in the whole of England. Just look at this first goal. It showed also the great talent of... Steve Perryman. We've seen him slot through balls before, but just look at this one when the ball comes down to him. Look how he weighs up the position. There he is in possession and hooks it through there. Now here's Martin Chivers, superb skill, takes it on his thigh. There's the acceleration. Just in those few strides, he gets where he's got to be, first to the ball. And as the goalkeeper comes out, he's cool and it's in the corner of the net. Corrigan actually just got his hand to that shot, but he couldn't stop it. A really wonderful performance from Chivers and an encouraging one for Spurs. But the second goal that they got from Alan Gilzean, a, a really delightful player with superb touches of skill, showed the value of a quick pass. Cyril Knowles gave a very effective quick pass, proving that you don't have to be flowery to be effective in football. There it is. It comes to him. It's only a simple one, but it gives Al Alan Gilzean the ball just when he needs it. He's got the opening now, takes on Heslop, and as Corrigan moves on the run, I think he's moving too quickly there and is not quite angled in properly. He sees the gap in the corner of the goal and puts the ball in it. So there we are, the two uh, Spurs goals that brought them a victory. But now, Malcolm Allison against Alan Mullery. And during the World Cup, as you no doubt remember, uh, Malcolm Allison never disguised the fact that he thought that Alan Mullery was not the player for England. He was always full of criticism of Alan Mullery's play. And indeed, in this morning's papers, uh, Malcolm Allison is quoted again as saying, <clears throat> Mullery is a good, strong, slow player. 
but how can you compare him with Colin Bell, who was head and shoulders above everyone? Another point made by Malcolm Allison in his attack on Alan Murray uh, was that he too rarely scored goals. Well, the goal he got against West Germany in the World Cup and the one he scored against Crystal Palace last week certainly belie that fact. Murray not being given a specific marking job at the moment. Way over the far side is Keith Newton and it's a good ball for him. Newton should take his pass over us now, run at him. The ball for Murray! Alan Murray! Alan Murray! Murray. Knows. Steve Perriman. Kills in to touch it off now for Mallory to drive it. Oh, a fine goal by Mallory. So off we go. Alan Mallory against Malcolm Allison. Referee, if required, Jimmy Hill. Well, I think I might be required, Malcolm. The point I want to make to you to start with is that I think everybody respected your view of Alan Mallory at the start of the World Cup. But he was playing so well and you didn't change it. I gave you two or three opportunities and you really refused to admit that he'd had a good World Cup. Why was that? He couldn't change his mind. He couldn't change. He made himself look a laughing stock on television, wouldn't he, if he changed his mind? He's a big man. Well, he thinks he's a big man. But he says he couldn't change his mind after he said I was a bad player and I played well. It, it would have really put him in a Why didn't you change your mind, Malcolm? He played reasonably well in the World Cup. Array, hold on, that's the oh, first oh, time oh, you've oh, ever right. said that. Cut it now, cut it now, <laughs> because we might as well go off, because he's changed his opinion straight away. <laughs> that doesn't mean to say you're a good player. I never said I was a good player. You what? said I was a bad player. I'm what? saying I'm a better player than you ever were. I didn't say you weren't. No, but this is my opinion against yours. You're entitled to your opinion, but you never ever change your mind, you see. This is the only thing about you. You've got a lot of pride and you, all that. You talk, you talk about players. You know. <clears throat> it's not a personal thing between you and I. You talk about the standard of players. You talk about World Cup players. You talk about midfield men. If you're going to compare yourself with Overath and Beckenbauer mm. and Ball and Bell yeah. and, and these fellas, Montione, you know, if you think you're as good a player as them, I don't think you're as good a player as them. I think you're a, you're a good a good passer of ball, a good one pace player, but no acceleration. I don't think you're good in the air. Is, is this is this a, a problem in no acceleration? It's, it's if, a problem if you're talking about world class yeah, players. There's stacks of players that have got no acceleration. Alan Ball hasn't stacks got any acceleration. Players. I'm as quick as Ball is. I'm, I don't say I'm a better player than Ball is, but I'm as quick as Ball is any this, day. This is a matter of opinion. I don't. It's think my opinion. Yeah, it's your opinion. Yeah. But it's not my opinion. No, it's not your opinion. You see, but the only the thing people is, that listen to your opinion are people in Manchester City. Even at Manchester United, they don't listen to your opinion. Well, I, I don't know. I didn't ask anybody to listen to my opinion. You know, I was yeah, asked the to come. Is you're, with... you're, you're projecting the image over on television where there's millions of people watching. Surely, but if I'm you're to turn around in the that's world, what that's what I'm on television for to 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 give my my opinions of certain things. I said that you never scored any goals. You played 100 and, 124 games pre, three previous seasons to the World Cup. You scored mm. six goals yeah. as a midfield Very consistent. player. As a midfield player, yeah. you know, yeah. and and I feel that the way England were playing, you know, with eight defenders or nine defenders, mm. all the defenders were playing well because they play at the expense of the forwards. The only thing, the only thing, were you mob back here sitting on your backsides out in Mexico? You having to go? You couldn't lick Alf Ramsey's boots, you, and you wanted the job. If you had the job, they wouldn't play half as well for you as they played for that's, him. That's your opinion. You're entitled. I know, to it. and it's it's the right opinion as well, well because say, I know watching you, you every week and shouting and screaming on the line, I know they'd rather play for him or you. He's not doing that now. Malcolm, I let's be fair. Him Yesterday, him. sat in the director's box and was anyway, quiet throughout is, the game. This is, you know, yeah. this, he's getting all upset, you know, because uh, I'm entitled to get upset. You're getting upset because, because you know, you're big for England, okay? You know, you're, thirty-one caps, yeah. thirty-one more than you. All right, you're yeah. big for England. That's very good, you know. But you're playing in a system in a situation you now where I think they need players with more flair. This is not against you personally. Colin Bell. Yes. Of course, Colin Bell because he plays for Manchester City. I, I rate Colin Bell a world-class player. But the thing is, he plays for Manchester City. Well, that's nothing to do <coughs> with Could I bring up a point? Could I bring up a point, Mark, specifically the job that he had to do uh, one on one game, particularly marking Pele. Now, Pele can't be an easy player to prevent scoring goals. And in fact, I remember I won ten bob off you because I don't think Pele scored in that match. He never, he, of course, he did a good job. He marked Pele, you know. Yeah. Isn't but that he, vital in a team to have a man I, to do I must that? come into this, Jim, because I don't think that sort of game is is a sort is an easy it's an easy sort of game. For anybody, yeah. I think. Just to, mark to go and out say, look, you've yeah, got to mark somebody. Because they've got seven other defenders as well. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But I, I don't think this is. A, but 
comparing the other games, I thought I played reasonably well in all the other games, not only the one against Pelly, because it stopped Pelly from scoring. I think this was this was comparatively prob- probably the think, easiest game. Don't of you the think life. you've changed your game? You know, even in the World Cup, you know, when you got in the six-yard box and scored that goal. You know, I'd never seen you in that situation before. No, but Mal, because this is why you didn't know Because I had to it. take notice of, of the team manager. If the team manager said to me, get up there and get in, inside the box, before the Germany game, he said to me, look, I'm not restricting you in any way today. He said, if you find yourself in the box, he said, get in there, he said, and score goals. And that's where I was. But, but before these that. games, he said to me, look, you are our first defender. You play in front of the back four. Now, I've respected this man for it, and I've done the job which he's told me to do. And I'll do the job if I get picked again. I won't listen to you or anybody I else. I didn't ask you to listen to me, but I'm just saying, well, when I've seen you play for Tottenham, you never get into them areas. You never get in them danger areas. Three goals I've got this year, nearly scored this one year, against you. This year, that's what I'm saying, this yeah. year. Yeah. But not before that. You scored. You played 124 games before that and yeah. scored six goals. I should play another 124, you know? but, but only score six. No, you won't. I mean, you've, you've getting into them areas now, you know. This you know, th- this what has it, definitely <clears> affected what, your, your way of play. What, what are you, what's the first quality you look for in a player, Malcolm? <clears throat> Well, I always like I like players with pace. You know, I like players who are quick. What who play five games a season? Um, I don't know what you mean by that. Play well, five. you mentioned to me another player. We won't mention now a Spurs player who play five games a season. Yeah. Hmm? What? Wouldn't you say the greatest quality of a player is one who plays forty-two games a season? Of course, he's the greatest quality. Has he got it? He plays forty-two, go forty-one, forty-two games the last three or four seasons. He's played. Yeah, I mean, but well. Last ten seasons. Well, I mean, I've I'm played 41, 42 games. Yeah. I've missed eight games, I think, since I've been at Tottenham in six years. All right, this is. Are you I'm not saying Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. I am going to referee now, declare a draw, and shake hands, and let's finish the whole thing because I know really you both respect each other an awful lot. Can we have a handshake there? <laughs> well done, lads. Terrific. I don't know about you, but I'd hate to play against that pair there, Malcolm Allison and Alan Mullery. And our thanks very much to them for coming into the studio today. It's time for some more action now, and it features the side that is now making such a strong run towards the top of the second division. Hull City, managed, of course, by the former Arsenal star, Terry Neal. Well, yesterday they went to Norwich, and they won by two goals to nil, but they also had their chief striker, Chris Chilton, sent off. Here come the goals now, and the sending off as well, and Hull City are the team in the white shorts. Wilkinson. Jeff Butler. Briggs. So far, Hull City in longer spells looking the more poised side. Wagstaff to Butler. Houghton coming up, asking for it. Houghton to Lord, who's free there. Oh, it's there! Well, Houghton. What a shot. Houghton just taking it off. Malcolm Lord and rifling it into the back of the net. Kevin Keeler never moved. Padden. Bennett going up for it, beaten by Wilkinson. Ken Foggo. Ken Fuggo with a shot charged down by about four white shirted players. And now we go into the second half for the Bennett second Hull goal and the sending off. Hooking it back. But no danger. Chilton up there completely on his own, holding Forbes off well, which is quite a feat in itself. And that was unfortunate, and I'm, I'm afraid that Chris Chilton's name is going into the book. The book is out. Well, that's an unusual sight from Chris Chilton, a score of 199 goals for Hull City, but the name goes into the book now for another reason. And Forbes needs to fit again. Booked against Chester in the League Cup in the replay. Booked again today. Well, that's a reasonably unsavoury ending of this match. We've now a minute and a half of official time left, but of course, uh, with one or two incidents, we must go into injury time. Free kick against Duncan Forbes, handball. Ken Houghton on the ball. Butler on his left. Wagstaff up front. Neat play by Malcolm Lord. He's checked out by Patton. Wagstaff! Number 
number two in injury time. And Malcolm Law, the man getting the congratulations on the right, a great bit of running. And that really puts the lid on it. Commentator there, Jerry Harrison, and the pictures come from Anglia Television, and Hull, of course, won that match by two goals to nil. The perfect illustration, I think, there, of how a player can be sent off for retaliating. No sympathy, of course, for children for butting Duncan Forbes, but a certain sympathy, I suppose, that Forbes himself uh, didn't go off. Here we are again, but there's the kick, an ugly one, and there's a kick which obviously hit Chilton. It's a very strong man who doesn't retaliate, and I must say, although uh, Chilton deserved to go for that butt, I feel very strongly, too, that Duncan Forbes should have gone with him. Now let's uh, have a look at uh, some of your letters, at least reflect some of your letters, and take up again the business that we started last week about special reduced rate for old age pensioners into our football grounds. And last week we showed that London First Division clubs, I'm afraid, do very little for their old age pensioners in general. But other clubs do. And I think first of all we should make it clear that Crystal Palace do provide half price entrance behind the goals, and they also allow old age pensioners who supported them in the Third Division to retain their tickets uh, for only £4 a season. In the second division, Charlton allow half-price admission for pensioners, as do Millwall, by way of a special pass available at their office. Orient have special admission gate for uh, old-age pensioners, and Queen's Park Rangers sell their season tickets at half-price to pensioners, and Watford give away 100 ground season tickets per season. Third division, Reading allowed pensioners on the terraces for three shillings, and Southend go one better, also reducing their grandstand prices. And even non-league clubs like Hillingdon and Amateurs, Hounslow and Wheelstone wrote in to say that they let their pensioners' uh, supporters in at a reduced rate. And Malcolm Allison was telling me a little earlier today that Manchester City allow their old-age pensioners in at half price through the same gate as the boys, which means that there's obviously no extra manning uh, for clubs to allow pensioners and boys in at reduced rates. And that, to me, seems the best idea of all. Certainly, I'd like to see London's first division clubs doing a little more for their old-age pensioners. Talking of one London First Division club, Chelsea. And I bet you've never seen the Chelsea side looking like this. This, in fact, uh, a journalist friend, Bert Barham of mine, brought uh, this programme back from Chelsea's Cup Winners Cup match in Greece. Do you recognise the team? One, Bonetti. Two is Webb. Three is Mulligan. Four, Harris. Five, Dempsey. Six, Hollins. Seven, Weller. Eight, Hudson. Nine is Peter Osgood. Ten is Hutchinson. And eleven, Coik. Charlie Cook, of course. The second leg at Stamford Bridge on Wednesday. Teams not as per programme. Right after that, let's move on to our third match today, and it's one that shows some George Best, some brilliant action from Georgie Best. Manchester United against Blackpool at Old Trafford yesterday, where United are the team wearing the red shirts in this match. Craven. Burns. Craven aware that Burns was on the run there, and Green is in the middle. A fine break by Mickey Burns, but again he didn't get his centre over. Bobby Charlton, Morgan wanting a long one out on this wing. And Fitzpatrick has gone ahead. But Morgan, beautifully played. Making space for his cross and best! What a magnificent goal! Still in play, not now. Willie Watson, the new man in the United Colours. Right into the second half now. Green. Craven. Hutchison. And still Hutchison. Trying to put it back for Green and it didn't quite work. Blackpool really have had no luck in this game. Brian King. Nice double change of direction, and what a shot! Bobby Charlton. Charlton throwing the long one forward for Gowling. Gowling has been very well watched all afternoon by James. Sadik. Green. Burns again a good tackle. Kidd.
Hutchison again, so difficult to shake off the ball. And a nice cross out, what a good goal! Mickey Burns, the scorer! So that really turns the gas up under this one. Willie Morgan. It's a corner to Manchester United. A game that's reflecting its goal-mouth incidents in the number of corners. Eight now to Manchester United, seven at the other end to Blackpool. Bobby Charlton is going to take this one. James is up there, that was Thompson's fist. And now Hutchison back helping out in his own penalty area. Ricky Burns to Suddick. Craven. James Green is offside, but the pass was never released. Mickey Burns. George Best setting it up for a shot. Here it comes, off the ball! Georgie Best! Magnificent George Best, 1-1 one, one the result. Commentator Gerald Sinstat pictures Granada. We've got about a half minute left, and uh, we haven't given Fulham a mention on the programme this season. Uh, Jimmy Hill went to see them when they uh, beat Brighton in midweek, and Fulham, after all, are top of the third division. Jim, what do you think? Well, I saw a lot of things that pleased me on that particular night. Brighton weren't as easy to beat as one might imagine. They fought every inch of the way, but Fulham came out deserved winners at the end. What impressed me more than anything was the form of Barry Lloyd. He's one of those players that when he came from Chelsea, the crowd were getting out of a bit and they didn't have confidence in him, and I think it showed in his play. But on that night, he certainly is a star of the future, and I think he is going to lead Fulham to go back into the second division. Well, that's it for today. Hope you've enjoyed it. Join me for On the Ball next Saturday lunchtime, the big match next Sunday afternoon. A lot of George Best fans have been saying that we're unfair to him, showing him being sent off at the start of our programme. We finish with the George Best that we all like to see. Best. George Best setting it up for a shot. Here it comes! Off the ball!